I have a story when I received mercy. And maybe about five or five or six months ago, I was working at FedEx. I'm still working there currently. But um, there was a time where I was working upstairs with the rollers. And rollers is basically just this long kind of hallway with all these automated rollers that carry the packages from point A to point B, basically. And um, I was working up there, and my job was called facing. And I had to make sure that all the packages stayed in line. None of them were, like, you know, over the side. But while I was working up there, it started to get a little hot, right? And I had a hoodie on because it was, you know, still winter. Well, not winter, but it was fall. But I had a hoodie on, so I was like, dang, it's getting, you know, real hot. So I had to, like, you know, take off my hoodie and, like, kind of wear it around my neck, which I shouldn't have. Remember that. But um, while I had it over my neck, I saw this one, this little measly tiny package all the way over to the left. And when I tried to go, you know, and reach for it, the rollers caught my neck. And, and like when it caught my neck, it pulled me, it pulled me to it. So like my face was to it. My face was, you know, kind of, it wasn't getting burned, but it was rubbing against it. My face was against it. I had a couple of hairs tangled up in it. Both my, uh, my hoodie, hoodie seeds were tangled up all, all on the rollers. When I tell y'all, I was getting strangled. I was getting strangled, strangled. Like, I'm talking, like, and, like, it, and like, it kept constricting. It kept on going, it kept on going, it kept on going. But like me think, you know, me just being, you know, kind of prideful back then, I was extremely prideful. I was like, I was a liar, right? I'm being completely transparent with y'all. I wasn't even a Christian back then. I did not believe in God. I thought God was just some superstitious, some something that you know the government made up to you know control our minds or whatever. I was like a conspiracy theorist back then. But um, while while I was you know getting strangled, I tried you know trying to like push up a little bit because I've been working out. You know I felt pretty strong, but I, I tried I tried to like 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 push myself off of it and it wasn't working. I was like. Like, what's going on? So like, I start to panic. I really start to panic. I start, like, flailing, flailing my arms around back and forth. I start kicking my legs to try and turn, like, turn off the rollers. Nothing was working. Nothing was working at all. But, like, I was, I was just about to give up, right? I was just about to just accept what happened. I was about to, like, you know what? This, I guess this is, this is just where I die. And in that moment, I felt this this calm come over me, you know? I felt this calm come over me. I felt, I felt this hand on my shoulder. And then I heard my sister's voice, not yet. You've got to fight. So after I heard that, um, I, I, I just got enough strength to push myself just a little bit so I can turn my head and get air. I maybe got about five or six breaths of air, but I completely forgot that all the other packages were coming. They were still coming up. They haven't stopped it yet. The guy across from me, he was, he was freaking out. He was panicking, trying to get people on the walkie-talkie to get up here and save me. But the package was coming. So I had to keep, keep one arm up. And, and, and mind you, before, I wasn't even able to push myself up with both my arms. I had to keep one arm up and stop the packages. And it was a long line of packages after I got out. And... Once they stopped it, they stopped it after about maybe 30, 45 seconds. I don't know how long it was, but it was a long time. It felt like forever. But after they stopped it, I got out, like, I went over to the side. I, like, I lost it. Like, like I started screaming, you know, like, going crazy. And, like, I went to the bathroom and, like, to, like, you know, just, just cry my heart out. Because I thought I, I thought I was getting ready to lose everything. And when I got in my car and I was about to go home, um, I was like, what in the world just happened? Like, I almost, I almost croaked. But um, I'm the, like, I started driving and like, I started, I started getting really angry. I started getting really angry. Like, I, I was like, why am I still here? What purpose do I have to still be here? And I think that, to, that, that purpose is me being here right now to tell, to tell all of you about, uh, God's grace and mercy, because even through, even through me being disobedient, not listening to God's voice, rejecting God's voice, I don't want anything to do with you, he still loved me enough to save my life. Now, there's about uh, four verses that I want to share with you all that further proves 
God's grace and mercy. So I want you all to go to 1 Timothy 1, 13 to 16. First person that gets there, just, you know, raise your hand or say something, whatever. 1 Timothy 1, 13 through 16. Timothy 1. 13. 1 Timothy 1, 13. Now stop right there. This verse really connects with me because as Paul was, Paul back in the day, his name was Saul before he was named Paul. And Saul, he was a persecutor of Christians. Persecutor, like, like persecution as in like the, he would throw them in jail. He would have some of them killed. That's why he called himself the worst of all sinners. But as it says in uh, verse, I think, verse 14, and our Lord poured out his abundant grace on me and gave me the faith and love which are ours in, in union with Christ Jesus. He loved us enough to where he, can, to where he has enough mercy and forgiveness to still give us grace after we've done all of these bad things. Now, I want you all to turn to Lamentations 3.31. And it's a pretty tiny verse, but you can still get a lot from it. Hmm? Uh, Notations 3.31. And someone other than William read it. Did you read it? Go ahead. Now, what do you guys get from that verse? Okay. Anybody got any any opinions or ideas about that verse? Exactly. And that was kind of on point too, because what I was getting ready to say is that the Lord is merciful and will not. Will not is the key word there, and will not reject us forever. Even though some of us may reject him in like, you know, every day, every week, every month, every year, maybe all of our lives, he won't reject us forever. That's why we can still have the power to go back to him and say, I've sinned, God, and he'll forgive you because he's just. Now, next verse is Psalms 103.8. One oh three eight. Oh, you got it? Go ahead and read it. The Lord is merciful and loving, slow to become angry and full of responsibility. Keep going. Or repay us according to our sins and wrongs. Meaning, he's not a God of revenge. Now, some people may say, you know, eye for an eye, which says that in the Old Testament. But this is saying 
that he does not repay us according to our sins, which to me means that he forgives our sins. He fully forgives our sins. He doesn't even like, 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 okay, if you were to say, but God, I've sinned so much, he'll, like, he'll say, what sin? Because you've already, because he's already forgiven you. That's already in the past. Now, the last verse, the last verse, and then I'll be done. But the last verse is uh, Ephesians 2, 5. Uh, Ephesians 2 5. Yeah, you flipping, flipping. I'm going crazy. Oh, wait. Who's going? I'm going to let him go. You go. Stop right there. This verse is saying that, well, we were spiritually dead. Now, if y'all remember a couple weeks ago, Mr. Anthony said that we were, ca- that, that, what'd you say? That we were carrying dead weight. That we were carrying dead weight. Sp- or spiritually dead, as it says in Ephesians. And in our disobedience, he brought us to life with Christ. So that kind of, it's kind of already saying that Christ is the only way. And it, and it is by God's grace that you have been saved. Now, some people may think that, like, um, well, how do I get grace? You can't really get grace. God has to give you grace. That's the only way that he'll, because, you know, you know, he, you know he, he's a being, right? He's not just, you know, just, you know, just, just God. He's also a being. He's an, he's an emotional being. And that emotional being has choice. So, child, so God chooses to give us grace. So, what I take from this verse is in spite of our wrongdoings and mistakes, God still forgives us and gave us not only a son, but mercy and grace.